What up, YouTube? So I pre-ordered this uh, Star Wars Mandalorian Child animatronic or Baby Yoda animatronic a while ago, and it came in today. So I figured I would do a teardown of it and see how they got this guy working. Okay, before we begin, uh, when he comes on the shelf, he is preloaded with a demo. So if you touch his head, he does this little routine. And based on watching that, I'm assuming one motor is running the eyelids, the head, like a uh, tilt, I guess you call it, or head nod, and the ears are probably all, all in one motor on one gearbox. Just the way that I hear the motor turn in, I think it's all in one gearbox. And the arm is probably on a separate motor. That's just me making assumptions. And uh, I would imagine that this guy is really simple. He probably... Uh, has a blob on a circuit board controlling them and there's pro pretty i would assume there's pretty much not too much to them uh, probably a capacitive sensor on his head so uh let's get started shall we Okay, some paperwork, more paperwork, and a manual. Let's talk about batteries. And what do you do about these? Do you twist them off? And he is pretty much free. So I guess that's frustration free packaging, they call it. Okay, let's see. He has Velcro on the back. And there he is. So he has a switch on the back here that says uh, on, try me, and off. So he's in the try me mode, which I assume is the demo mode, off. And then if we go all the way to on, which is, oh, there's all the way on. Let's see if he does something different. Okay, so uh, his uh, face is made out of hard plastic. His uh, ears are made out of like some kind of silicone. And there is a seam there. And then his arm that doesn't have a motor pivots. And it's made out of some kind of like uh, soft plastic. And this arm is out of soft plastic too. Okay, so the back has Phillips screws, surprisingly. So it's almost like they were begging for someone to open them. And as you wiggle them around, his head is kind of loose. Like, it feels like it is on some kind of ball gimbal. And I know uh, the back part you have to open up to uh, get to the batteries. Okay, so actually, I messed, I, the bottom part is where you get to the batteries. And uh, as you can see, there's just uh, one speaker in his chest that is connected up into the head, it has wires going to the head. You have your power switch on its own circuit board here. You have a... They actually have a... Um, a PTC-1 
So they actually have some kind of thermo fuse on them. You have the gearbox here. It's kind of already came down a little bit. And the linkage here, I don't know if you can see that real well, is uh, attached to his head. So this whole thing is probably ran off of one, uh, one motor. So I guess let's keep on going. I guess, uh, and there is a uh, grease on the um, gearbox. I guess I'll open up the back of his head. Oh, lost one screw. I had to find that later. Okay, so what do we have here? Yep, only one motor drives the whole thing, so they fooled me. It's kind of amazing how they design these gearboxes. And uh, we'll keep on uh, tearing it down. I can already see the capacitive sensor up on this top here. Let's see. There's little, uh, little hooks here for the ears so they don't slide off. If I undo that, ears slide right off. And actually, I can go ahead and take the arm off so I don't break anything. There we go. Okay, so let's see before I get tear apart too much. So what it is, is they have these little, uh, they're using these plastic pieces as like a little link and the head is kind of floating on a universal joint here. You, you see you have the one pivot point here and the other pivot point on the sides here. And uh, they have uh, plastic uh, linkages that uh, does the movement. It looks like though, looks like the only movement they have is a head nod. So it looks like to me, unless, no, this might be a linkage right here. So we'll go and try to, well, first let, let's uh, turn them on like this and see, uh, Let's see if we can learn anything. <laughs> Another thing I notice is that they have a resistor in line in series with the motor. Two resistors. That's interesting. So it appears they have just little inductors attached to both sides of the motor. And uh, I have no idea why they're doing that. And then here's the switch circuit board that has the PTC fuse on it. And I looked it up. That fuse is set to trip at 1.3 amps. Okay, let's dive down even, uh, even deeper. See how far we can go before we get past the point of no return. So it looks like these two screws here at the top is what uh, what holds the face in. So to my surprise. I'm wrong again. So I was wrong about there being two motors and I'm also wrong about there being a blob on a chip. Uh, the chip actually has a, I mean the control board actually has a chip on it. So there's a close up of the chip. It's probably some cheap China microcontroller so I'm not, I'm not gonna even bother looking it up. Um, and then here we have a uh, Surprisingly, they're using connectors. 
Um, you know, connectors are money. So I'm kind of surprised they're using connectors. This uh, one back here goes to the motor. And this is probably, let me see if I can get a number off this chip here. Okay, so as far as uh, this eight pin dip chip, I can't get a data sheet off of it. it. You can buy them. There's all these Chinese websites listing them for sale. Um, it's the only thing I can get to it is it's a, it's a one channel transistor or they're calling it a one channel motor driver. And I have this uh, table that it was included on um, operating voltage is two to nine volts. Uh, continuous amps is 1.7 amps. Maximum amps is 3.5 amps. So it's some kind of transistor motor driver and one channel, apparently. So at the top here is the little capacitive sensor. And all it is is, uh, all it is is a piece of metal that's in a slot here. And it's one wire, uh, one wire going back to the control board. So that capacitive sensor isn't going through a connector. It is soldered straight to the control board. Now, the one weird thing about the eyes that I wouldn't have noticed till I tore it apart, it looks like the whole eye pivots. It's not just a eyelid going over top of an eye. It looks like the whole eyelid pivots. So we'll test that out. And as you can see, the whole eye moves. Okay, let's go down and uh, see what the gearbox looks like. Okay, it looks like we have the motor just has a worm gear that uh, gets some gear reduction into uh, going into the main box. So on the cover here, that uh, the only gear coming in is this small gear right here. And then on the opposite side, it mates up with this big cog right here. And this is what does everything. Now, whoever, whoever thought of this, it's amazing that they can design stuff like this. And uh, the eyelids run on a, there's another cam in the back. I don't know if I can get that in there. You see that, uh, let me get the pointer. So in the very back right here is a, another cam that pushes on the eyelids and the eyelids are spring return. So that the eyelids run on that cam and that's how they control the position of the eyelids. Now my question is, this thing moves complete in uh, 360 degrees. You can never stop moving it. So my question is, how do they know what position it's in? I wonder if they have some kind of optical sensor on the back side of the circuit board. I guess I'll have to take the circuit board out to find out. Okay, I was wrong again. It's not an optical sensor they have this little um these contact pads and you see there's the part attached to the main cog and that makes contact with the circuit board and then that's how they're keeping track of what position the motor's in and then no components are on the back side of the circuit board at all And then just giving you one good shot of the circuit board, the front side of it. Um, like I said, it's really simple. I'm assuming that this microcontroller is producing the audio. And this uh, conductor over here, and I mean inductor and transistor over here is driving the speaker. Um, yeah, so this microcontroller is somehow producing audio, driving the transistor for the motor, and uh, keeping has a, must have inputs to it to keep track of the position of the 
um, gearing. Okay, now the question is, have I reached past the point of no return? Can I get this thing back together? Okay, let's see if he still works. <laughs> Let me put him in show because, or try me, because then I know his arm will work. Okay, his arm still works, so I guess this was uh, successful. So that was the teardown of the Baby Yoda animatronic. Um, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, I can think of some ways that they could have cut corners big time, but uh, it's pretty well put together for what it is. Comment below on what you think. Thanks for watching.